Mom and Dad were sitting by the radio. Their heads hung low. Ripped from her home. You never know if you will return. And sent to a concentration camp. If you haven't seen it with your own eyes, you would never believe it. The Holocaust, through the eyes of a young girl. Everything is our fault, even though we didn't do anything. Well, welcome to the 700 Club. The floodwaters throughout the Midwest have receded, leaving behind a trail of heavy mud. And that's a major problem for farmers. Gordon, the floods have also been devastating for homes and families in several states. Heather Sells has this look at the damage from the heavy rains and high waters. A week after the flooding started, the waters are still standing in many places, like in this neighborhood in northern Illinois. Farmers say it's still too wet to plant and expect lower yields when they do. And families everywhere are dealing with precious memories turned to trash. I raised my daughters in this house and my grandkids. You know, they've been coming over since they were little. Since they were born. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Pretty heartbreaking. Like, first load I picked up was a wedding dress. And, you know, you see the families up crying, so it's, it's pretty hard. The floods have also proved dangerous. In Michigan, fast rising waters turned into rapids, almost sweeping away this couple in their canoe. Along the Mississippi, waters are still rising and flood warnings extend up and down the river from Wisconsin to Louisiana. They're catching drivers off guard. It was over my seat because I was sitting crisscrossing my seat and my behind started getting wet. In Indiana, the Wabash River is threatening to breach levees. We've been sandbagging all morning. And in the Dakotas, a mix of snow and warm temperatures could bring the Red River to near record levels. What's going to be happening in the Dakotas and Minnesota this weekend is going to be unbelievable. We still have over a foot of snow in some areas. Temperatures will be heading well into the 70s this weekend, and that snow will be rapidly melting. And believe it or not, sequestration budget cuts may put some communities in danger of flooding at an even greater risk. The government will soon shut down more than 100 gauges that warn of imminent flooding. Heather Sell, CBN News. Well, budget cuts are also behind the FAA's uh, saying that the, the reason for the delays in air travel this week. Lee Webb has that story from the CBN newsroom. Lee? Gordon, Congress is trying to end the air traffic controller furloughs that led to those widespread delays this week. The Senate voted last night to erase about $200 million in cuts to the Federal Aviation Administration. The House is set to move quickly on the measure. The FAA said it had to furlough those controllers because of the automatic budget cuts called the sequester. Those cuts started after the White House and Congress could not reach a budget deal earlier this year. House Democratic Leader Nancy Pelosi says she would rather cancel all $85 billion of those budget cuts. Democrats in Congress say they are not seeking now any exemptions from Obamacare. That statement comes after reports that leaders from both parties were trying to create an exemption for members of Congress and their staff members from a key requirement of the law, one that would require them to buy health care through insurance exchanges. That would cost them thousands of dollars. Republicans blasted Democrats, though, for trying to get out from under a law they passed but The Hill.com reports Democratic leaders say they do not want an exemption and will not support one if it is proposed. The Family Research Council has released video of that domestic terror attack that took place in their building last August. Here you can see in this video the building manager, Leo Johnson, wrestling Floyd Corkins to the ground and taking his gun away. That was after Corkins was shot in the arm, or uh, shot Johnson rather in the arm. Corkins entered the building with a hundred rounds of ammunition. He later confessed that he planned to kill as many people as possible at the conservative lobby group. During an FBI interrogation, Corkins explained why he chose the Family Research Council. It was a uh, Southern Poverty Law lists uh, anti-gay groups. I found them online. Okay. I did research on the website and stuff like that. Okay. Corkins was convicted of domestic terrorism. The Southern Poverty Law Center has not removed the Family Research Council as a hate group from its target map. Well, more threats from North Korea. Its military leaders saying they will respond with nuclear weapons if their country is threatened. 
The talk of war in recent weeks comes as no surprise to one North Korean defector, a man who has seen firsthand what it's like to be a Christian in the Communist North. George Thomas has this exclusive story from Seoul, South Korea. Mr. Bay says the headlines blaring North Korea's threats to attack America and South Korea are very familiar to him. From my early childhood days, preschool days, I was told that my number one enemy was the United States. CBN News is taking precautions to protect Bay's identity. He was born in North Korea. We lived in constant state of war. Two or three times a year, the government announced it was going to attack our enemies. Bay is reportedly one of a few third-generation North Korean Christians known to have defected to South Korea. His life as a secret believer inside the reclusive communist nation is detailed in the book, These Are the Generations. Your life is marked with risk the moment you decide to accept Jesus Christ as a savior. That's the price you pay for being a member of the underground church. A price that he and his family have paid. Bay was arrested without charge for more than a year on suspicion of Christian activity. My entire family, including my children and parents, were always evangelizing. Of course, we did this in secret and we had to be careful, but the authorities became suspicious. He was eventually released from prison without being charged. Bay says that was a miracle, but others weren't that fortunate. Several members of his family, including his mother and brothers, are in a North Korean concentration camp because of their own evangelistic activity. They were sent to a concentration camp because the authorities found a Bible and several evangelistic pamphlets in the house. Some 200,000 prisoners are being held in political prison camps in North Korea. An estimated 30,000 of them are Christians. Bay now works to see his country one for Christ. He advises Eric Foley, an American who's living in Seoul and helping train defectors to effectively share the gospel. 80% of North Korean defectors are in regular contact with family members still inside North Korea. That means that the front line of North Korean ministry isn't on the border with China, it's right here in Seoul. In a nondescript building not too far from Seoul city center, Foley holds regular evangelistic classes for North Koreans who've defected to South Korea. He considers these men and women highly strategic for reaching North Koreans around the world with the gospel. North Korea maintains a large contracts with Russia, Mongolia and China where workers are sent abroad for from one to 10 years. So North Korean defectors actually uh, can reach their family members not only by going back inside North Korea, but even by going to China, Russia, Mongolia, Southeast Asia. Bay and Foley say the best way to pray for North Korea during these tense times is to remember the underground believers who work quietly in the shadows. They are the faithful ones who endure so much to share Jesus. Please pray that God will give them strength and more boldness. And what is most impressive is that that work doesn't change. Even in the last month when Kim Jong-un rattles his saber, the North Korean church is still focused on being faithful and propagating the gospel. George Thomas, CBN News, Seoul, South Korea. CBN Disaster Relief is helping the victims of a recent deadly earthquake in China. The quake killed nearly 200 people and injured thousands in the Sichuan province. CBN Disaster Relief is responding with free medical service and relief aid. Teams are giving out rice, cooking oil and soup mix along with soap, toiletry items and clothes. And medical professionals are providing pr free examinations as well as treatment. The ministry is serving close to 140 families in that region. Gordon? When disasters strike, we want to strike back. and We want to sh show people that we love them. And if you'd like to help with that, uh, we invite you now to give to CBN Disaster Relief. There's an address where you can write to. Uh, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Or you can just call us and say, I want to help. Um, help people in, in need, and if you want to designate to that China earthquake, you can. Uh, just call us, 1-800-759-0700, or you can log on to CBN.com. There's a place on the giving page where you can designate your gift to disaster relief. Christy? Thanks, Gordon. Well, up next, one of the safest places in the world for a pregnant woman and her baby, but maybe not for long. We have banned abortion for 30 years. The most pro-life country, perhaps in the whole Western world, is now standing on the brink of abortion. 
Find out what these crowds are doing to stop that coming up on the 700 Club. But later, life in a concentration camp through the eyes of a child. Her diary and artwork tell the story of her unbreakable spirit still ahead. Jack and I are having the time of our lives. The kids are on their own, and now we're back in control of our time and the way we spend our money. That's why Consumer Cellular is the perfect cell phone company for us. We get great service, and compared to our old plan, we're saving a ton every month. Consumer Cellular is the wireless provider for people who want affordable service without the contracts. Listen, I don't think I'm cheap. I only want to pay for what I need. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what do you pay a month for Consumer Cellular? My bill can be as low as $10, $15 a month. Wow. But we can change our plan anytime. So even those months we use it a lot, we're always getting the best price. Try Consumer Cellular risk-free for 30 days with free activation, a $35 value, and free shipping. Consumer Cellular is the exclusive wireless provider for AARP members. Ask about your special discounts. Call Consumer Cellular at 1-800-730-5103. Go online to ConsumerCellularTV.com or visit a Sears store today. Monday. Fight for your life. Be strong. A mom-to-be falls to the ground. It was like someone had taken a knife and had stabbed me in my stomach. And sees death at her doorstep. He said, I'm going to come across this room and I'm going to take you. We kick off our annual week of prayer. All I could do was just lie there and pray. I said, God, help me. I don't know what's going on with me. Monday on The 700 Club. Well, Ireland is one of the safest countries in the world for a woman to have a baby. But that could soon change because of an intense political battle over abortion. Dale Hurd has the story from Belfast. 35,000 Irish citizens converged on Dublin in January to tell the government to leave Ireland's pro-life law alone. Ireland is one of the last safe nations in Europe for unborn children, but that could all change soon. Ireland's abortion restrictions have come under intense international pressure and relentless attacks in the Irish media. And now some are blaming Ireland's pro-life law for the death of a pregnant woman. Ireland's media and pro-abortion groups have been pushing a story that a 31-year-old pregnant Indian woman died because she couldn't have an abortion. But the facts of the case are misleading. Nia Vivrian is a national pro-life leader. When news of Savita's death first broke, it was massively exploited by abortion campaigners. This became a global headline, and the global headline was that Ireland had killed Savita Halapanavar because of our pro-life laws. Savita Halapanavar died last year at University Hospital in Galway from septicemia, or blood poisoning. Her husband claims they requested an abortion three different times in hopes of saving her life. The press reporting made it sound like she died because she couldn't have an abortion. But at the inquest into her death last week, medical experts determined that Savita died from sepsis and a series of medical errors, termed a medical misadventure. But the media continues to make it look like she died because she was denied an abortion. Dr. Sean O'Donnell is a psychiatrist and an Irish pro-life leader. The Irish media basically went to the world media and said, Look at Ireland, Catholic Ireland is allowing people to die because they can't have abortions. Pro-abortion groups want the government to make law what Ireland's Supreme Court ruled in something called the X case that would allow abortion if the mother felt suicidal. But experts think that would lead to de facto abortion on demand. Sinead Ahern is with the pro-abortion group Choice Ireland. Every day that the government fails to act to legislate for the X case is another day that women's rights are being violated and, women's rights are, and women are potentially being placed at risk. The message that women's lives are in danger because of Ireland's abortion law appears to be exactly wrong. The statistics show Ireland is one of the safest places in the world for a pregnant woman. Irish doctors are not prevented from intervening where there's a life-threatening condition arising in pregnancy, that they will always intervene to save the mother's life, even if that means the unintended death of the baby. We can say in this country, we have banned abortion for 30 years. In that time, 
we have become one of the safest places in the world for a mother to have a baby. And that's according to the United Nations. Irish Prime Minister Enda Kenny was elected on the promise that he would not open the door to abortion. But he's already wavering. Pro-life protesters in January called for Kenny to keep his promise. But the Irish Parliament is said to be formulating legislation that would allow abortion if the mother is suicidal. Even though a majority of the Irish people are pro-life, the odds are now stacked heavily against the nation's pro-life law. The most pro-life country, perhaps in the whole Western world, is now standing on the brink of abortion. The European Union has been pressuring the country to change the law. And pro-life leaders say they're being outspent by millions of dollars. Compared with that kind of firepower, pro-life forces can only take their message to the streets and try to win one heart at a time. But the forces arrayed against Ireland's abortion law are very strong. The pro-life movement is fighting back hard. We cannot make this the year that abortion is legalized in Ireland and our pro-life ethos is destroyed forever. Dale Hurd, CBN News, Dublin. Now, the disturbing thing is the media manipulation here, where you have a woman who dies from blood poisoning, but it's, it's blamed by a, a obviously pro-choice media on somehow a denial to, to an abortion, even though the doctors were saying it's, it's not medically necessary. Very parallel to the lack of coverage of the um, death penalty case in, in Philadelphia, uh, where the, the media, you would think that that would be one to be heavily covered, but it's not being. So it, it's happening in Ireland, it's happening in Europe, and it's happening right here at home. Christy? Mm. Well, up next, Gordon, an astonishing first-hand account of the Holocaust from the diary of a young girl. I'll never find my way around here. But so what? We won't be here for long. There are 21 of us in quite a small room. If you haven't seen it with your own eyes, you would never believe it. Hear how this Jewish girl and her journal and drawings survive. Jim is 38, mortgage, married, three great kids. He wants to protect his family with a $500,000 term life insurance policy. What do you think it'll cost him? $100 a month? 60? 40? Actually, none of the above. Jim can get a $500,000 policy from a highly rated insurer for under $19 a month. His secret? Select quote. Select quote is impartial. They'll comparison shop the pick of insurance companies like these to give you a choice of your best prices. SelectQuote has great savings on term life for women, too. Jim's wife, Deidre, can get a $500,000 policy for under $16 a month. SelectQuote has helped make term life insurance affordable for hundreds of thousands of people since 1985. How about you? Just call this number or go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. Hi, I'm Christy Watts. Okay, so I have a question for you. How's life? Listen, I know we all face challenges and we all go through difficult times, don't we? I mean, I know I do. But did you know that the staff right here at CBN sets aside a special week of prayer each spring just to pray for you? Because we care about you. We care about what's going on in your life. Listen, there are absolutely no prayer requests that are too big or even too small. We just want to pray for you. So please, mail in your prayer request today. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Well, each spring, the staff of CBN, we set aside a special week of prayer to pray for our partners and you, our viewers. In fact, next week from Monday through Friday, we're going to meet at noon to pray for whatever need you have, big or small, it doesn't matter. We're praying for you. So we're asking you to watch for this mailing. Oops, I got to hold it in my hand. Watch for this mailing and take a moment to send in your prayer request on the enclosed card, which means that I need to find the card. Oh, praise God. There it is. It's going to look like that. And if you did not receive this mailing, all you have to do is just send in your prayer request to CBN's Week of Prayer at CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. No matter what, we just ask you to just call in, mail in, because really, this is our time where we want to spend praying for you and your needs, your family, your heart, whatever it is. We're here to support you and love you. Gordon? 
Well, it was known as Hitler's gift to the Jews. Terezin didn't look like other concentration camps. There weren't any gas chambers. Its inmates didn't wear striped uniforms. Terezin was part of Hitler's plan to convince the world that the Jewish people were enjoying life in a city he had built just for them. More than 15,000 Jewish children were in prison there, but only 100 of them survived the war. And one of them was a young girl named Helga Weiss. At just eight years old, Helga started keeping a diary that described her experiences in Terezin and three other concentration camps. Here's her story in her own words. Mom and Dad were sitting by the radio. Their heads hung low. This morning at 6.30, the German army crossed the border. I didn't really understand the meaning of those words, but I felt there was something terrible in them. I was not from a very rich uh, family, but I had uh, good parents, we were a good family, and I had a very lucky childhood. But after occupation, everything has been changed, and our life became still more and more difficult. Since March 15th, there has not been a single calm day. Everything is our fault, even though we didn't do anything. We can't help being Jews. First, my father was expelled from his job. All the Jews were expelled and lost their jobs. And then also children were expelled from, the, from schools. This time, the Germans came up with a great idea that even the Middle Ages would have been proud of. Stars, bright yellow with the word Yuda. At school, we boast about whose star is sewn on best even though it's not pleasant to have to wear it. We make light of it. We got used to other things. We'll get used to this. Another new thing is coming to disrupt Jewish families. Supposedly, there will be transports. Everyone is getting ready for travel. The arrests never stop. Danger lurks at every step. When you leave your house, you never know if you will return. Tomorrow, we say goodbye to our home, our relatives, and everything that was dear and close to us. We are supposedly off to a new land to avoid persecution. We will be taken care of. Things will go well for us. I'll never find my way around here. But so what? We won't be here for long. There are 21 of us in quite a small room. If you haven't seen it with your own eyes, you would never believe it. Men were staying in different place, but it was some possibility sometimes that we can somehow smuggle some messages to each other. I was fond of drawing, and it was December, and it was a time where children in a normal life built a snowman, but it was also a memory of the past life. It was a, such a normal, childish drawing. I found this drawing very important because it was my first drawing in Terezin. And when I smuggled it to my father, he answered me, draw what you see. After the response by my father, I started to describe the everyday life in Terezin. During the time, I created about 100 of these drawings. Because I spent in Terezin almost three years, and they are very important today because it was forbidden to make pictures, to make film. And maybe that's why my drawings are today so important, because there doesn't exist any other picture material. What kind of Mother's Day is it when I don't even have a flower for my mom? I know. I'll make one out of paper. It's not much, but after all, 
Mom knows there's not a lot of choice. Anyway, next year I'll make it up to her. By that time, we'll surely be home. The resin was used as for propaganda. They wanted to show uh, the world that Jews are staying well. Once it was invited, International Red Cross Commission. A huge cleanup of the town is in progress. It's funny, but it looks like they're trying to change Terezin into a spa town. Freshly sown grass is coming up in the town square. The middle is decorated with a huge bed of roses. There's a pool, a merry-go-round, and seesaws. Everything was arranged like a stage set. At that time, we very much hoped when International Red Cross would come and that they would see the situation, it would be help for us and something would be changed to better. But the inspection came and they watched and looked only on the places which were shown them. And the inspection itself lasted only a half day. And in the evening, they described a certificate, they found everything okay. So it was a great propaganda, and they believed it. They created a film. And it is the only film which existed, but it is a live propaganda film created by German. From this film, they asked the prisoners come to sit in front of a camera, and they had to say, I am well in Terezin, I don't miss anything. Transport were sent not only to Terezin, but also from Terezin somewhere. Nobody knew where. It was called only the East Transport. We had no idea about gas chambers. This first four transports in 44 were men only. And this the second one, my father was sent away. Here we sit today, for the last time. We can't hold back the tears. We've stored up too many of them this past week. I can still see him standing on the steps, waving, smiling. Daddy. Why won't you let us volunteer to go with you? They promised this man their families would stay in Terezin. It was lie as again as everything was lie. And so two days after he left, I was included with my mother. And we hope to uh, meet my father. We had no idea that something like that existed. We didn't know very well. It was a step in hell. It hell exists. It perhaps looks like Auschwitz. That was not enough food, and for the food we received, it was not possible to leave. The situation was terrible. It was hopeless, but we never wanted to leave a hope. When somebody left hope, he was lost. Mom is getting weaker by the day. The end of the war might not be far off, but even if it's only a week away, our end will come first. God have mercy. Give Mom enough strength so she can see us liberated. For us, it was a little too late. We were glad everything was over, of course, but the first thoughts were, so we survived, but what about my father? Did he also survive? We left the camps, but we carried the camps still inside. The people who brought us to Prague, they told us, you are free and go home. But it was no hope. We were not expected 
Nobody expected our coming back. Most or perhaps all of them who returned, returned quite alone. They had nobody. I had my mother. I never gave a thought about we could be separated. So when I married, she stayed with me and lived with my family till her death. And she died in her age 84, 20 years ago. We never learned really where he perished, but probably just, just after coming to Auschwitz, he was directly sent to Jewish chamber. I always suppose and think about him, what he would say, what he would tell me, what I have to do. My father was very fond of music, and I married a musician. My son is a professional musician, so is my granddaughter, and so always I think about it, how it will be a pleasure for him. So he's sitting with me there. Read it very carefully and keep it in memory what happened and do something that it could, wouldn't happen anymore. That's what we learn, to be tolerant to each other, to understand to each other, not to be selfish, to be healthy, to have family, to have hope and freedom. These were once people healthy, strong, with their own will and thoughts. Love for life, for good things, for beauty. What's left are phantoms, bodies, skeletons without souls. No one will weep for them. No one will lament their passing until someday there will be a mention of them in our textbooks. This diary of an eight-year-old girl in a concentration camp, it will stir your heart uh, because her father told her, don't, don't paint pictures of, of where you'd like to be or of memories long gone. Paint what you see now and write it down. And she did. Uh, and it's an incredible story. Uh, and it's not just a story of the horrors of it uh, or the, all the lies that the Nazis told. Um, it's also a story of her own spirit and how she kept hope where there seemed to be no hope and how she made it through. Well, this week, Helga's Diary is finally being published in English for the first time. And you can find it wherever books are sold. You can also log on to our special page at CBN.com. There you can learn more about Terezin and the Holocaust. Plus, you can see behind the scenes photos and more of Helga's artwork from the concentration camp. So do that. Log on to CBN.com. Christy? Mm. Well, still ahead, a Holocaust survivor now struggles to get around the house. Hear how she's getting the help she needs later on today's program. If you've been thinking about financial options for your retirement, maybe how to provide some real security for you and your family, you really ought to consider a reverse mortgage with AAG. In uncertain times, it's a safe, effective financial tool. It's already being used by hundreds of thousands of other Americans. It allows you to eliminate monthly mortgage payments, pay some bills, or simply enjoy your retirement more. A government-insured reverse mortgage with AAG allows seniors to stay in their home and turn their equity into tax-free cash. To qualify, there are no credit score requirements, and remember, you continue to retain complete ownership of your home. Call 1-800-789-8635 to receive a new special edition handbook featuring reverse mortgage borrowers, plus an educational brochure and DVD presented by Fred Thompson absolutely free. Find out more. Call AAG today. Call 1-800-789-8635 now. If you're the mother of a child with behavior problems, I'd like to talk to you. My name is Janet Lehman, and I'm a behavioral therapist and a mom. I know what it's like when the child that you love becomes a defiant, out-of-control child who disrespects you. That's why my husband James and I created The Total Transformation, the program that tens of thousands of moms are now using to turn around their child's behavior. 
If you've heard about the Total Transformation and wondered if it will work for you, now you can try it for free. I'm willing to give away a thousand programs today for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. I know the Total Transformation works because I used these techniques with my own son and with troubled kids for over 30 years. Let me prove to you that it works by giving you the program free. Call the number on your screen now to get the Total Transformation free. And welcome back to the 700 Club. The Senate has moved closer to passing a bill to tax purchases made over the Internet. But a final vote will not come until early May when senators return from vacation. The president supports the bill, but it's likely to face a tough battle in the House. Some Republicans there consider the measure a tax increase. Operation Blessing is helping women across Latin America start their own businesses. A woman named Glindy was left a widow after an earthquake struck her town in Guatemala recently. Her house was destroyed and she had no way to provide for her family. Operation Blessing, though, brought uh, Glindy a corn mill so that uh, she could work and earn enough money to take care of her children and send them to school. OB teams also helped Glindy rebuild her home and provided her family with food, clothing, beds, blankets, and an emergency kit. You can find out more about Operation Blessing by going to its website at ob.org. Gordon and Christy will be back with more of the 700 Club after this. Why are so many companies, unions, and organizations across the country choosing the Avia Dental Plan? Because group plans start at as little as $5 per month, and groups can save 20 to 80% off of high-quality dental care. Everyone qualifies. And there's no waiting or limits on visits to the dentist. Call now and save $20. Plus, get three months free. Call now and you may be able to save $20 and get three months free. 1-888-431-CARE or visit aviadental.com. A photographer battles an addiction to crack cocaine. I had given up all hope of, of recovery. Finds the strength to say no. I hear the Lord clear as day just say, Brad, you don't have to say no to drugs anymore. I'll say no for you. Next week on 700 Club Interactive. The Holocaust ended more than 60 years ago, but Elena Yaffe still remembers it every day of her life because she is one of the survivors. Elena Yofi was only nine years old when Nazi soldiers invaded her hometown and sent her family to live in a Jewish ghetto. Elena and her mother survived, but her father and little brother were executed. I was expecting death every day. We were afraid to go outside because we could get killed. There was no food. We had all kinds of diseases because we were very crowded. Elena is one of 250,000 Holocaust survivors living in Israel today. They can no longer earn a living, and nearly half of them live in poverty. To meet this need, Operation Blessing Israel is helping survivors with food, medical care, and home visits. Elena suffers from chronic back pain that makes it hard for her to do housework. So once a week, a volunteer from Operation Blessing comes to help clean her apartment. The fact that people come to help me do the cleaning is a very big help to me. I'm very grateful for that. Elena also suffers from poor eyesight, but she couldn't afford to see an eye doctor. So Operation Blessing took her for an eye exam, and all she needed was a simple pair of glasses. Now that I received the glasses, my life has changed. I feel more free and the tension is gone. I feel very good about Operation Blessing. They're doing a very big thing, pleasing God. Thank you. If you're a member of the 700 Club, you're part of blessing uh, that wonderful lady and, and many more like her. Uh, it's one of the untold stories, the number of Holocaust survivors that, that are living below the poverty line in Israel, and we want to help them. So if you'd like to do that, there's two ways you can do it. One. And just join the 700 Club because a portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing to help people in need around the world. 
Uh, so call the toll-free number, 1-800-759-0700. Just say, yes, I want to join. Uh, that's just $20 a month, 65 cents a day. And if you want to designate your gift uh, to Operation Blessing Israel, uh, there's the address, CBN Center, Virginia Beach, Virginia, 23463. Uh, or you can log on to CBN.com. There's a place there where you can give on the Internet. Or you can just call and say, I want to designate the gift uh, to help those people in, in Operation Blessing Israel. So it's all, all part of it. Uh, call us, 1-800-759-0700. Christy? Good deal. Thanks, Gordon. Well, up next, the Newsboys made it a hit song and asked this man to write a book with the same title called God's Not Dead. The author, Rice Brooks, hands us the ammo to prove it after this. Come on, Give me guy. that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Ah, sure, life is busy, but I found a way to make a huge difference in people's lives. I guess you could say I'm changing the world right here from home. I bring medical supplies and doctors to people in need and dig wells so that villagers can have clean and safe water to drink. I make it possible to preach the gospel in over a hundred countries, including right here in America. And when disaster strikes, I'm there, providing food thank you, and emergency supplies to give people hope again. Every day, CBN and I are making the world a better place. Here you go. <laughs> my life is hectic, so I join CBN through Pledge Express. My bank does all the work, and I know that my gift is being used where it's needed most. So become a CBN partner and join Pledge Express, because you can do a world of good right from where you are. Hi, good morning. Are you ready to get started? One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints, it's great for your cartilage, it even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't start relieving joint discomfort fast enough. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of fast-acting Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-906-1967. Great for fast-acting relief of joint discomfort in your knees, hands, and even your hips. Instaflex is available at GNC, Vitamin World, and Rite Aid Pharmacies. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-906-1967. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-906-1967. One nine six seven. In 1966, Time Magazine famously posed the question, is God dead? Well, skepticism is certainly on the rise, but so has faith. Not blind faith, but real evidence-based faith. Take a look. Rice Brooks is known for his work with university students around the world sharing compelling evidence that God is real. So when the award-winning Christian music group, The Newsboys, asked Rice to write a book based on their hit song, God's Not Dead, that's just what he did. In his book, Rice shares nine proofs of evidence for God and how Christians can answer the skeptic's question, does God exist? Well, please welcome to the 700 Club, the co-founder of the Every Nation Family of Churches, my dear friend, Rice Brooks. Rice, good to see you Thank again. you, Gordon. It's been a good long to time. to see you, yes. <laughs> we have to get out on the mission field a little bit more. Absolutely. Right after you became a believer, your brother came to you and, and tried to talk you out of it to say, how, how can you believe this? And that was the first time you had to defend your faith. What, what was that like? Well, he was in law school at SMU. And uh, he, uh, when he found out I'd become a Christian, he started studying the Bible to find the contradictions in it. Mm. So he came home prepared, kind of like for his uh, presenting a legal case. And, uh, you know, it doesn't always happen like this. Sometimes it takes a long time. So I don't want to give people the, the wrong idea that it's always this kind of quick. But uh, by the end of that day, I actually looked at him and I said, Ben, it's not what you don't know about God that's keeping you from him. It's what you do know. Mm. And I think he began to doubt his doubts at that moment. So by the end of the day, I got him in my truck and drove around Dallas and I baptized him. And when he came up out of the water a few moments later, he said, you know, I don't think you've answered all my questions, but he says, I think I was asking the wrong questions. So that kind of, he had told a sweet mate at SMU, he said, I'm going home to get my little brother out of this born again thing. 
And so uh, quite as a twist there, I've been kind of getting people out of the atheist thing (laughs) since that time. What what are some of the, I guess, ways to to get, there there seems to be a rise in what I call militant atheism, uh, where they're they're actively attacking uh, people of faith. Um, What are ways to sort of turn that to, to get them questioning their own atheism? Well, I think the first thing is that we, as a believer, have to know what we believe. First Peter says we have to have, be ready to give a defense uh, for the reason and the hope that's within us. Um, I went, in writing this book, I went down to Australia to the Global Atheist Convention. And it was the headliners of Richard Dawkins, Dan Dennett, Sam Harris, all the kind of the pantheon and the atheist world, the Mount Rushmore of the atheist world, if you will. And uh, I sat there on you know, opening night, you know, 3,500 atheists. Uh, and me and my friend, and really the four speakers were four professional comedians. So you'd think if you were going all the way to a convention that you'd have some deep, you know, scientific yeah. philosophical conundrum that in their minds demonstrated God didn't exist, but it was really ridicule. So even though there are arguments, there, there are insults more than arguments. So we have to be prepared for that. We have to be prepared for the drive-by shootings of atheism. The, the Bible's a fairy tale. There's no evidence for God. And once you get past that first moment of that kind of that bluster, there's really not a, I, I think that if we do a little study, that our evidence and our arguments are better. And that's well, why Christianity has grown, and that's why I think many times they don't even want the voice to be heard, because when the voice of real reason, biblical reason, and godly reason comes up against that, I think that people have a real choice to make. Well, how do you deal with what I call the invented arguments that um, sort of disguise themselves as science? And, and I'll just deal with one. Right now, within the intelligent design um, group, they've actually I have a very, very good argument that there hasn't been enough time uh, mathematically for randomness to produce the complexity that we see in the universe. Right. And that it seems the universe is specifically fine-tuned to produce life. But then they come out and say, well, there's a multiverse. And so there's an yeah, infinite it. number. Yeah, it's, I mean, and it's re- like they're in, inventing new things that can never be measured and, and never yeah. proved to explain their worldview. When somebody asks me, do you have any evidence for God? I say, well, if you're looking for Bill Gates, you don't find him by breaking down a Microsoft computer. So the evidence for God is not, well, is he a particle or is he a rock or whatever? He, he is the intelligent mind behind the universe. So the question is, is there evidence that the universe was designed? Now Dawkins, Richard Dawkins says, Yes, the world looks designed, life looks designed, but don't be fooled because you're left with the question, who designed the designer? Well, even atheists, many of them will say that that's not really any, that's, that's kind of a fallacy. You don't have to have an explanation for every explanation. If I see a turtle on a fence post walking through the woods, I don't think time and chance put it there. Now, I may not know who put the turtle there, but I know it didn't get there by itself. The point is, is that, that life is designed, and they can't admit that because if life is designed and there's no way it could have happened by random processes, then there's a designer. So they have to fight that battle. They have to come well, up with a multiverse. Their, their answer to that is... They have to have a multiverse, yeah. which means there's an infinite number of universes which there's no proof for. And you can never prove it. Well, or Darwin, <laughs> who said we, can't fig- we don't know where life came from. Dawkins doesn't know either, so their theory is that maybe it came from outer space. So again, you just keep pushing an, it back. Yeah, you so just push again, it back to an infinite regression. So I think our, our evidences and our arguments are much better. We just have to learn them. Uh, well, I've always thought that the best way to um, sort of explain it is to taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, the, the, the thing that will finally convince you. Well, your evidence, is I, was, you, I was laughing. When thinking, you hear it. Gordon's going to say, yeah, my evidence has come with me to India and we'll see somebody <laughs> healed. You'll see God's real. So You'll, you'll see. Yeah, that, 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 taste cuts, see. that cuts to the chase right you there. You know, it's very empirical and, and undeniable once, once you know. Um, and I, I think a lot of the current uh, debate, how, how do we get to the point where it's science versus religion? Because I think that is really um, sort of hurting the church in, in the world today, that we've allowed it to be pitted that way. Right, yeah, and, and really, it's, you know, faith and reason are not enemies. In all reason, there's faith, you know, and in all faith, there's reason. So you can't separate the two. And we are called as believers to use our mind, to love God with our mind and our hearts, 
as well as our heart. So again, we are not anti-intellectual and we're not anti-evidence. Uh, now we may not have all the answers, we may not have all the answers, but there's enough evidence for God in what we can know to trust him in what we can't know. And so the ultimate evidence really is the resurrection that God, not only is there scientific evidence in terms of what you referenced, the fine tuning of the universe, the complexity of, of life and DNA. I mean, if anybody ever got a pocket text and you realize somebody sat on their phone and you got a few random little, you know, uh, letters didn't make sense. What if you got a text three billion letters long? Mm. That's the ordered information sequenced in human DNA in the human genome. Far from it, and that's why they have to go to, well, maybe if we have an infinite number of universes, you could get something like that. But ultimately, God, God submitted himself to the ultimate science experiment. God became a man in Christ. And for 33 years, he basically said, test me. He, he demonstrated undeniably who he was. And then the ultimate verification was the resurrection. And he's still demonstrating today. Still Jesus, demonstrating today. the same. Yesterday, he's alive. today and forever, and he'll demonstrate for you if you just ask him. Um, the, the prayer I love, and we've heard it in plenty of testimonies on this program, uh, it's the heart cry, Jesus, if you're there, could you show me? And if you pray that with all your heart, the Bible says you will find him. Well, the book is called God's Not Dead, Evidence for God in an Age of Uncertainty. Uh, I would encourage you to get it because I, I agree with Rice. We need to be able to defend the faith. Uh, and defend why we have a hope uh, and why we believe in Jesus. And um, that lots of really good arguments and an exam examination of the current state of uh, both uh, science and philosophy. So you get it. It's available in bookstores across the country. Right? Thanks for the book. Thank you, Gordon. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. All right. All right. Christy, over to you. Thanks, Gordon. Well, coming up, we've got your email question. So whatever you do, don't go away. Hey, I'm Ryan, and I make people sound great. Quiet. Okay. It looked like what people hit. A lot of times I add sound effects to video to make it really come alive. You need a dog bark? I got it. You need some horn beeps? I got it. I add music to stories to set the mood. How was that? For drama. In television, audio is very important, especially when you're spreading the message of Jesus Christ. And I want to make sure people hear that message clearly. I'm an audio engineer, and I work at CBN. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids, do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah! Well, do you? Yeah! Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes now. We've come out with something wonderful for children. Um, it's the Superbook Bible app. It's available on superbook.tv slash app. Uh, and I encourage you to download it. It's a wonderful way for children in an interactive environment to get used to reading the Bible. And there are reading plans on it. There's all kinds of games. There are clips from the Superbook series. Uh, it's all available. And the best part, it's free. So it's uh, available for uh, iPhone right now. We're coming out with an Android version in just two more weeks. Uh, so get it. Uh, and I've also heard, Christy, that even adults like it. Have you downloaded it yet? The app or Superbook? Oh, the uh, Superbook app? Yeah. No, I'm trying to get into the techie thing. I'm not that great at it, but I will. You will. I've got the Bible on my um, iPhone, though. Well, get the Superbook. I'll get the Superbook, too. But then that'll encourage my son to use my phone What's even wrong with more. That? A nine-year-old with an iPhone. You know how frustrating that is? Every five minutes, Chase, where's my phone? Chase, where is my phone? Why is my battery dead? I'm feeling the anger right Well, now. there's frustration. With the nine-year-old, every really? now and then. Yeah, it's all good. All right, you ready for well, the next thing? Well, if you get him reading the Bible, then... He reads the Bible. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'll be quiet. I know. All right, it's all time right. for Bring It On. Okay. We've got some questions. I do. You ready? Fred begins, and he says, I felt led to pray the Lord's Prayer as a prelude to my regular morning prayer time. I don't understand the phrase. Lead us not into temptation. I don't believe that God leads us into temptation. I mean, maybe there's something in the original language that would clear this up. I've read three Bible translations to research this, and they have not helped me to understand Jesus' real meaning in praying this. 
Fred, you're right. Uh, James says specifically that God uh, doesn't tempt us. Uh, and so uh, this is uh, actually a, a bit of a mistranslation. There are um, uh, versions of the Lord's Prayer in the original Aramaic, and when you look at those, it, it's more accurately translated, lead us not into the test. Now, God does test us, and untested faith is no faith at all. Uh, but he doesn't test us more than we're able to bear. So um, lead us not into the test, but deliver us from evil. Uh, and then that word can also mean the personification of evil, the evil one. And it can also mean our evil inclination. So um, it's, it's a wonderful study to take apart the Lord's Prayer. I would encourage everyone to do that and, and try to get a concordance that takes you back to the original words uh, in, in the Greek. Matthew originally written in Hebrew. So um, do it. Examine the Lord's Prayer. Good I bet deal. you want to just run out there and do that. Start uh, reading it in Greek and Hebrew. No? Of course. <laughs> I want right. to do Alpha and Omega. All right. That's the only Greek. Alpha, Omega. Is that Greek? That's Greek. There you go. I'm bilingual. Um, Desiree says, Gordon, I would like to know why is a Superbook series not available in other countries outside the USA? My children want to see Superbook and really need the series. So what do I tell them? What would you tell your children if you were in another country? There's now that sounded hostile. Yeah, I, I, I can feel it. Um, wait, it's coming. Uh, we had to do it first in English and, and we've released it here in the United States and in Canada. And uh, once it's translated, uh, which is all going on now, it'll be released around the world. Um, so there's a, there's a map showing all the different languages we're gonna have it. Uh, then there's a wonderful thing we're doing as well, a family edition where you can get the first series, uh, again, done in all those languages uh, so that uh, families can have it and have the full collection at home. You just have to wait. Uh, the Superbook DVD Club is Unfortunately, just North America right now, but we're getting ready. Uh, should be ready probably by uh, the early part of 2014. So just be patient. It's coming. Good deal. I think we have time for one more, so we're going to okay. make it quick. Luke says, how do we respond to non-Christian friends when they ask, where was God on the day of the Boston Marathon bombings? Wow, you give me a minute for that one. I know. Um, it's called free will. Hmm. Uh, those bombers had the free will. God has given that to us. He's given us dominion over the earth, and that is done on an individual basis. And those bombers had the choice uh, of either trying to destroy innocents, uh, killing children, uh, or they had the choice to say, no, I don't want to do that. Um, what led them to the insanity of thinking that somehow or other uh, leaving bombs on a crowded street is, is somehow going to please God. Uh, I, I shake my head on that one, and I don't understand that. I don't understand suicide bombers. I don't understand the terrorism, uh, and I don't understand the illogic of thinking somehow that's going to lead to righteousness in Boston. I don't get that. But the theological answer is we have free will. And we can choose this day to either serve God and love Him with all our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves. We can choose to do that or we can choose the other way. We leave you today with these words from Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows His handiwork. God bless you. from CBN. Ooh, someone forgot to lock up. Everyone deserves a second chance. And you're sure it was Sharon? Definitely, Principal Travis. Maybe this time we can help her make another choice. What's up? I can't believe it. Sharon Meyer stole a bike in broad daylight and Miss Travis just wants to let her slide by. Superbook! Log on to CBN.com and receive Superbook's newest episode, Jonah for your gift of $25. Nineveh, God wanted me to warn them he was about to pass judgment. I say no. If Nineveh is doomed, then let it be doomed. Get off the no. I 
Big Buck fish were slimy on the outside. Give the children you love the Word of God as a foundation in their lives. People of Nineveh! It is amazing. Your words have been heard by all of Nineveh. Superbook, Jonah, available now.